Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Brick and Easter Broadcast Network. And you probably noticed we have a new cover that's on this YouTube broadcast because today is a special day because we are starting the recap reboot of the Lego Masters Season 2 uh, evaluations. And you probably know that we had this done by Brick Literacy, as well as Femme from the Block, and who else would be a better guest to be on this show? But my friend and fellow AFOL, Yano River Blue, also known as Femme from the Block. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so I think many of you know that Remy and Yano were doing these reviews at nine o'clock on Tuesdays, and I work Tuesday nights, and I will say, Yano, why don't you uh, tell everybody what was behind the scenes here? <laughs> well, I'm still doing. I'm still doing my makeup a little bit. <laughs> um, you can do my, that. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite things um, about doing the recap episode was actually that I've been doing these these face print makeup looks. So each makeup look each week, which is on my Instagram, is. Uh, inspired by different Lego face print. So I'm going for the uh, video mermaid pirate with my teal oh, lips and coral eyeshadow. Nice. I, have, I haven't quite gotten my wings on yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, no problem. And I, um, the Brick Cove is excited about the I reboot. Agree. And P.T. McEwen, ahoy ahoy. Oh, and oh. hello Robin Eklund as well and Glenn too. So welcome everyone. So. Why don't you um, give some background to uh, why are we meeting on the Brick and Easter Broadcast Network? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you everyone for being here. I'm excited because because Wednesdays at five is a definitely an easier time. Five p.m. Pacific. I know it was, it's even later for a lot of people. It's a great time for me. Um, so yeah, I don't aspire to be a streamer. I will occasionally stream on Instagram, kind of spontaneously, but. Um, Remy, Brick Literacy, had actually reached out to me and said, hey, I want to host a recap show. Would you like to come on and be my co-host? And I was like, yeah, OK, if you're taking care of all of that. And uh, uh, I hear Joel saying, you can't hear me very well. Can you hear me now? Testing, testing. Um, I can speak up a little bit. So Remy, as many of you know, has decided to take a break from I get the impression streaming specifically, both um, like tuning into streams and streaming himself. And you can watch his last Instagram live stream for like his official statement. But uh, my understanding in a nutshell is he's had some frustrations with the Lego community. I think most of us know he holds people to a very high standard and has some somewhat polarizing views, which personally I hold a lot of those views as well. Um, I just uh, don't hold people to the same standards I hold myself to. <laughs> so um, that's, yeah, that's that's my statement about that. Um, wear a mask. I think that was a big one. He had been to a Lego convention recently where a lot of people have not worn masks. Unfortunately, this pandemic is not over. Um, I personally know a lot of people who are vaccinated, who have gotten breakthrough infections. Um, so just please, everyone, be safe. I think that's... that's uh, an important statement that I endorse that Remy had made. So yeah, that's, uh, but then Brick and Easter reached out and said, hey, I stream, I have a channel. Um, I would like to keep doing this. And so I'm very excited to be here on the Brick and Easter broadcast network and be joining the stream and be able to continue for a lot of the same tricky lug audience, this recap show. So thank you everyone for being here. I'm so excited that we're going to be working together. Yes. And me too. for those of you who may have missed it, we recently had a mock improv session where we did 90 minutes of building based on the audience feedback. And we had so much fun. That was my first chance to work with Yano. And now we'll be working once a week, at least until the end of the season for Lego Masters season two. Yes. And Aubrey is in the chat who is in that too. If you haven't seen, the mock love right. stuff, it's so fun. It was a lot of fun. And also, uh, 
I she loves the look too, by the way. <laughs> the brick cove says she loves the look that you're doing. And if you want, here I can I can uh, go full screen if you want to put more makeup <laughs> on. So <laughs> we can we can let Yano stay backstage. It'll be a reveal. <laughs> get all of her makeup put together. And yeah, so for while while we're waiting, what we'll do is we'll just chat a little bit about what mock improv is. So if you do hashtag mock improv. And what I'll do is I'll put that in the chat right now, but hashtag mock improv and take a look on Instagram at some of the builds that we did. And uh, I think, in fact, one of the things I could do, let me see if I can share my screen. I can share with you my build and Yano's build that we had on Instagram. So let me pull that up because I, I think it's just amazing what, people can come up with in a short amount of time. And in fact, I could probably pull up Aubrey's as well. So here, let's start with this one. And <laughs> I think, let me see, let me make sure I got StreamYard working right. There you go. And let's let's uh, let's make that full screen so Yano can still put on her makeup. <laughs> Apparently when you share screen, it automatically comes up with the two people. Um, so anyway, so here is my build. And for those of you who well, were part of the stream, what it was is that we had to have our character in a ramen shop juggling fish. <laughs> and so I got, when we spun the wheel, Aubrey got adult, Yano got baby, and I got non-human. So I decided to use R2 Debo, which is this character in the lower left here. And by doing that, uh, it, it was just a lot of fun to put, put that all together. And let's see if I can, I, I don't know if this will do it by tab. Actually, I think it does it by tab. So I'm gonna stop my screen for a moment. Yeah, let me stop sharing and I'll pull up behind the scenes again. <laughs> this has been fun because this is a new platform for me as far as using StreamYard. So we'll show you Yano's. And once again, sorry, you know, it uh, automatically defaults to that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, so this is Yano's, where I mentioned that uh, she got the baby, and the baby was was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of people laughing, flying fish, good times. <laughs> yes, thank you, PT McEwen. Thank you for that. And yeah, laugh out loud from Joel and lots of laughter from uh, people in the chat. So thank you. I'm glad that you had an opportunity to, to watch that. So this <laughs> one is Yano's. And let me see if I can get a wider shot because this is the tight shot of Super Sewer Baby. There we go. So you can see too, the, the one thing that Yano did was that she took the 16 by 16 and branched out from that literally with the tree, which was a lot of fun. And here's another shot on the side with the little hermit crab right here. So that's a little Easter egg for you. And I think one of my favorite parts is the back where <laughs> you put together this aquarium and look at the rat too on the left. And then you also have a barrel full of crabs. So it was just a lot of fun to just watch all of that creativity. Oh, I didn't realize you had a video in here too. Yeah, a little Oh, look at that. Video. Look at that. Nice. I'm going to have to see you. You also, if you watch the video, and if you just scrub all the way to the end, you'll see that Aubrey and Yano were both finished with like three minutes to spare. And then I'm frantically putting mine together. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Let me see if I can pull up Aubrey's too in the background. I am ready as well. You ready? Oh, right, there she enough. is. Okay, well, let's let's go ahead for the sake of the audience who, yeah, who yeah. weren't able to watch, because I know that uh, here we got another comment here from uh, Glenn Copeland that uh, angler fish luring in the <laughs> at yes. the customers is funny, and then also Robin Eklund loved how the grill pieces look like a bamboo floor. Thank you. Yeah, that was my final minute of like some <laughs> some extra detail. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm going to pull up Aubrey's too, so then that way everybody can see what she did. Because I I was so in love with the Duplo fish that she put in hers. So that's another thing that just 
you know, the three of us all had the same assignment, but for different characters. And look, the puppy. Okay, we, b before we move on to that, let's spotlight the puppy. <laughs> this is the reason I'm. Name? This is the reason I'm running late. Is my wife's out of town, and we've got this one loves me, but our other dog is is not into me. So I had to like <laughs> put put my leather gloves on to like pick oh. him up and <laughs> take him outside. <laughs> What's your dog's name? This is Oliver. Oliver, yes. very sweet. Yes. Very, very sweet. So he, he's the reason I'm still putting my makeup on. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. We're, we're a very forgiving group here. Totally. So that's why I was mentioning to Yano before the stream. I said, you know, don't worry about that because we're a very forgiving and, you know, caring group of people, which I think is, yeah. is really wonderful about this. And so, uh, the yeah, and Glenn says Duplo is underrated in the AFOL world. And it was really great to see Aubrey highlight this. So this is Aubrey's contribution. So she had the pirate and I'm going to just uh, scroll through some of her photos. So this Duplo fish just pops right out. And her adult choice was Redbeard the pirate and juggling fish over here. And you can see that uh, she's got also some fishermen and some other people and a chef in the background. So there's a close up of that. Really nice. I love the angle too of the flounder. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah. So I think, you know, if you take, oh, you did a video too. <laughs> She's got action features. It's you know, like I should have done set. a video. I've already taken mine apart. So I've started redoing mine. But this is great. Yeah, she had the spinning wheel too, the splat gear, which is really awesome there's so much action in this it yes. definitely makes me want to well it's also um, the tiles too the tile with the um i think it's from the ninjago city gardens maybe uh yeah, that tile yeah. on the left yeah really really nice and the the door in the back is from the dojo the spinjitsu dojo and look the the fish rocks too really well done so we have just so much talent in this group. It's amazing. It really is. So welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Are you composed now? <laughs> good enough, yeah. You feeling, feeling good? Are you invoking? <laughs> yes, always. I'm totally, I'm totally that girl on the bus on her way to the gig doing her makeup like in front of everyone. So it's, it's been a while <laughs> since I've had that experience. Yes. So that felt kind of like that. Not that I'm comparing our audience to um, a busload of people, which in San Francisco is quite a cast of characters. For sure. well, well, I think, you know, it goes back to us being a very forgiving group, an audience, because as you know, when we're all new streamers, right? We, we don't profess to be professionals, right? And so, you know, sometimes you're gonna have hiccups along the way. And I, I know my very first stream, I decided to stream like 20 minutes before I usually have a Zoom call. Oh, and then wow. I just told people, um, I'm gonna go live, but I won't put you on camera. So I had like a separate <laughs> camera on my hands on my very first stream. And then like 40 mi minutes into it, I said, you yeah, know, people will probably want to see my face maybe. Oh, Cause that's fine. another thing. Some streamers, they, you <laughs> never see their face. They only show their hands look. So anyway, it was just fun. It was just fun to, to see. And I'll be celebrating my one year anniversary streaming next month. Yeah. I know, I know. It's just amazing how far we've come. But I was just really tickled that uh, you and you agreed to, to work with me as the streamer and you know it's it's really your show and I'm I'm here to give you also some somebody to chat with <laughs> when it, comes, it comes to some of the commentary and sure. before the show Yano and I also worked out the technology so she should be able to share the different uh, screenshots because if you've been to the previous uh, before the reboot Remy and Yano would put screenshots up of the various parts of the show. So spoiler alert, everyone, if you haven't seen the episode, <laughs> you may want to turn your volume down or maybe, you know, pause and come back later. <laughs> but uh, it, it, this was, I really enjoyed this episode. It was a fun episode. Yeah. Oh, here, here we go. Click and share. Yeah. Called Bricking Wind. <laughs> Bricking Wind, right. Okay, add that to the screen. 
And I'm going to make that full screen for you. Uh, yeah, I think we have to do that collaboratively. OK, no worries. Let's see. I thought I already had it full screen. There we go. There we go. I hope you, you can see my my little mouse to like. Well, like I said, we're a forgiving audience. You know? <laughs> oh, it's kind of nice. It's like the laser pointer, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and if we were in a professional setting, we would be recording this and there'd be an editing crew going through <laughs> and editing sure. all this, right? Sure. Yeah. Which is what they had. Yeah. So this is the group shot. And mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting. There was no stop motion in this. They did have a lot of sound effects throughout it. And then they had right. this opening, like establishing shot where mm -hmm. they put this, like this green screen background in, and this was all moving, which I thought was cool to like tie them together, make it feel like they're all on different plots of land. Right. D different technique. And also before we go on, as far as uh, the Brick Cove says, Yano, I don't think it's a bad thing about you putting on your makeup and, and doing all that because if anything, She's impressed that you got the wings on that fast. <laughs> Thank you. And that is also, that's my my bus experience. Like you would have to do it like, you know, the precise, while it's like jostling, the wing. Right? You'd have to do, like, you'd be doing like the fill in while it's jostling. And then like, all right, bus is stopped. Wing, wing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then she also says uh, she liked this episode and she thought it was fun. It was I agree. Fun. I yeah. agree. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that visual animation at the very beginning where they brought in the backdrop and made them look like they were all in a field together. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a, a nice thing about post-production. They can do all that. Yeah, for sure. All right, and there. Debo's here. Hey, Debo. <laughs> <laughs> and the windmills of your mind. Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, so let's go to the first one, which was Michelle and Natalie's yes. like, Child's World. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is probably my favorite, to be perfectly honest. Oh, okay. There, there were a lot. You like in a lot of episodes, I'll be like, "This was in my top three. and then mm -hmm. sometimes I'll have said that like four or five times. You know, right? Um, and this is definitely one where I liked a lot of them. Um, but this one, like anyone that knows, I'm obsessed with Toy Story. Like, <laughs> there's some, uh, yeah. Any any comments on like this first overall image? Before we get well, into I I think to um, the all of the the very beginning shots where they have it center stage with the lights in the backdrop and I, I just always am really impressed with the sound studio and the design and all of that and and when you look at this what I love about it too is that it's so playful right because of all of the uh, the homage to their kids mm -hmm. and uh, Joel Pokemon Dameron says, did the Muppet Show do a skit with the song Windmills of My Mind? Yes, yes, they did. <laughs> I actually had an illustrated Muppet Show book as a kid. There was like this big oh, really? book with like skits that were illustrated. Oh. And there was totally that Windmills of My Mind skit illustrated, <laughs> like super psychedelic. Well, I also like this too, because of the way the windmills looks really balanced as far as the color. It does, you know, yeah. the red and the white. I, I really I love that. And then the, the bottom right corner with the stack of the Lego, like uh -huh. a stack of blocks. Yeah, it, it definitely gives you a sense of child's play. Definitely. And there's so many nice details. We get an overhead shot. You mm -hmm. can see it's like a checkerboard, which is really clever. You can see like a xylophone. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, the Brick Cove says Michelle and Natalie are my favorite surprise team of this season. Nice. Well, yes. I'm not sure if it's really a surprise because <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that after we go through the visuals because <laughs> you, you probably know if you watch the episode, you know, about uh, how, why are they still on the show? I guess is the question. <laughs> yeah, but this is really nice too with the Palisade bricks that they had as like little crayons sticking out of a totally. pencil holder. Yeah, totally. which is very dots too. Like that's yes. something that dots does, where you decorate the outside of a pencil holder, which I thought mm -hmm. was was good branding. Yeah, and it looks like a child just stepped away because not everything is perfect, right? Totally. <laughs> but totally. it does look like it was played with. So and really, yeah, good it's so clean. Like every, yes. it's not. It's really easy to read what everything is. This mm -hmm. was probably my favorite build. Yes, of markers. Yes, genius. Definitely. Yeah, I like too how they put the rainbow on the outside of the box as well. Mm -hmm. 
Totally. So they had a nice contrast of color and also white space. Yeah. And, totally. and I think when we get to some of the others, <laughs> we'll, we'll chat more about how some people right. they really didn't have the right balance of color. Yeah. And then I got a, I got a destruction picture for all of these two. So oh. this, is, <laughs> this is right at the end. You can see like how some of the little pinwheel whirly gigs are like right. rolling over whatever this little thing is, is uh -huh. like flapping in the wind. Oh, that's the kite string is flapping in yeah. the wind. Yeah, yeah, they were talking about the kite too. Uh -huh. And I love, let's see if I zoom in, um, it's a little pixelated, but it's like the, um, what do you call it? Barrel of monkeys. Oh yeah, it's oh, so I clever. didn't notice that the first time. There's a lot of oh, details. Wow. That's, that's why recap shows are great, is we that's get right. to the still <laughs> close together. <laughs> yeah, no, this is really good. Yeah, I, I think too that um, that box too. It it looks very similar to a toy chest or mm -hmm. a. Uh, to me, I'm thinking pirate chest. I'm sure you are too. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Here, let's see. But yeah, that's the last one I've got of of this build. Oh, and they made it to 45 miles per. Yeah, 45 hour. miles per hour. Now, should we talk a little bit about Michelle and Natalie? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> go for it. All right. So let me let me get this back to this view here. All right. Well, I think we had this discussion. I think on another stream. I think you and Remy were talking about this when when they had built the macrame planter holder uh -huh. in that challenge, the hanging challenge, and that they were in the bottom two, and they thought themselves they thought they were going to be going home, and they didn't. And we know why they're still there, right? <laughs> Come on, we all know why. I'm sure Joel probably knows this too because he mentions <laughs> it in chat all the time. That it's really, it's television, right? It's drama and it's the banter between Natalie and Will Arnett that they know that there was that chemistry from the very beginning and she's cheeky on camera and very spontaneous and you, know, you knew they were gonna keep her on for as long as they can. Right. Yeah. Yeah, which is not to say they're not super talented builders. Right. No, they're still talented, but you know, they thought they were going home. Right, Many right. of the audience members thought they were going home and the producers like, "No, let's keep them around for a little bit." <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that I mean that's just kind of true of reality TV in general is like the ones that are stirring the pot and causing a drama are, are often the ones that are kept long after they've yeah. gone home. And that's since true. this is pretty dramaless, it's like <laughs> well, it's still the ones that are making good TV and like being entertaining. And I do think right. like I would watch Natalie and Will's spinoff TV. Show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and Devo here says, too, they are good builders. We don't want to discount the fact that they are, are good builders. They Absolutely. really are good builders, Absolutely. especially that hat that they did for that uh, runway fashion episode. That was really good. And uh, Joel Pokemon Dameron asked, did the Barrel of Monkeys ever make it on any of the Toy Story movies? I think it did. I seem to remember something to the effect about, you know, I think they were trying to get the monkeys back in the barrel They're, and then getting out. I, I, I don't know. I think that's in like a little, one of the little shorts or something, but in the first yeah. movie when Buzz falls out the window, the toys yeah. are like trying to use a chain of monkeys <laughs> to get him back up. And then also uh, the Brick Cove says, I think they're a team that works well together and they want to be there. And they put out great builds. Yeah, Absolutely. they put out great builds. But I think that one was the questionable one where it's like, yeah, it, either one of those teams could have gone home that week. But uh, yeah. But this but episode, it, like their little like role play therapy skit. Oh, was, yeah. Was hilarious. Like it was, <laughs> it was, it was definitely the biggest like laugh out loud moment of the episode. Yeah, that. But when we get to Caleb and Jacob, that was the other big laugh out loud right. moment. So we'll, we'll get to that. All right. So what's next? All right. Next <laughs> is, uh, oh, do I have to reshare? No, you just. No, I, I, I just wanted to make sure it's all queued up. Figuring it out. Uh, so Zach and Wayne's Oasis. Yes. This one was beautiful. Like aesthetically, it's not one of my top picks, but everything, mm -hmm. it has a lot going for it, for sure. Well, this one was really the story that yeah. that came together. It was very close to them. And even from the very beginning, Zach and Wayne 
talked a lot about their heritage and growing up together, you know, that first float that they did about how they're brothers and they're together. And um, what I really, in this. <laughs> yes, exactly. That so that their, their family is in this <laughs> and their dogs are in this. And <laughs> when, when you watch the episode, if you haven't watched it yet, is that this windmill was not their original design. Right, right. They had to redo it in like an hour and a half, something crazy like that. So I want to make sure I catch up with the chat here. For reality TV, the contestant drama on LM2 is close to zero. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> it's almost like negative two because there's like the, <laughs> the acted drama that Will will like spur on. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then um, the Brick Cove was wondering who went home, and that was uh, Randall and Sarita with their um, uh, their, their balloon. balloon right, uh, yeah, right. they they went home that that episode. Right. And I think, uh, yeah. And Robin Eklund loved the movement in this build, and I agree yes. with that. The movement in this build was phenomenal. From an engineering perspective, this mm -hmm. was definitely one of the smartest. Yes. Ones. And the tower to blade surface ratio is a little off for me. <laughs> Bring the Debo. <laughs> there were a few that were a little off. Then this photo is right. a little blurry because it's just a screen capture of a moving shot. But you can see that character in the pink is their mom. Oh, uh, right. Um, which is super cute. Yes, I think the it's, one right there in the doorway. Yeah. Yep. And I think it's very clever that they had all this open space to let light in. And there's another yes. shot where you can see some of the interior details. Um, Definitely. You can see a little more of the layout in this shot. And then this is um, the archery lessons. <laughs> yes, archery lessons. And then also Joel mentions here that um, the surprise movement of the bed of flowers was pretty cool too. Yeah. Well, there was this bed of flowers and then another build too that have flowers that were moving. Yes. But did they have a close up of the dogs moving? Because I thought that they was weird. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Which again, yeah, so clever, so simple. Using those yes. little bubble pieces to catch air and the dogs yeah. going in a circle. So smart. Which it was really smart. Expect. And the dogs are just adorable. They're like chasing each other. Yeah. Really very, very clever. sweet build. It was very heartwarming that, you know, they did a shout out to their mother specifically about how she would support them and no matter what they did. And you know, hey, mom, I'm going to do some archery in the backyard. Are right, you okay with right. that? I'm going to shoot some arrows. And oh my God. I'm going to teach love, other people to do that. <laughs> so I'm going to admit none of the teams of brothers, I have bothered to like know which one is which. So because <laughs> like, we don't, you know, they just have the names of both of them with both of them on screen. Okay. Um, These are the sushi chefs. No, I mean, I know which sets of brothers are which sets oh, of brothers. Oh, okay. But like, I don't know which one's Zach and, or Wayne. Um but whichever one is teaching archery, this is supposed to be like him in his helmet teaching right. archery in this little blazer and scarf, which I'm kind <laughs> of in love with. And this guy with the mohawk and mustache, like a lot of a little a lot of storytelling going on here. So brothers from another brick are here. I love Wayne and Zach. They're so talented and super nice. Yes, absolutely. And I think you're right on this pairing. I think Wayne is the. Um, the brother who does the really strong builds and Zach is the archer, I think. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> somebody yeah. in the chat, see yeah. if I'm right on that one or not. And then Wayne brothers from the Never Brick. Uh, he, he loves Wayne's laugh, it always makes me feel better. Yes, Very definitely. Super sweet. Okay, Wayne teaches archery. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So this, thank I you. believe that's supposed to be Wayne in a little like ascot blazer yes. and helmet <laughs> teaching archery. It's like, you shall hit the target. <laughs> All right, so and the Brick Cove says, I love how they said, we need to step up our game. Uh, pretty sure they showed up with game yes, from day one. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. Um, so here's a little bit of the mechanics and we didn't yeah. run by too quickly to see that they put a bunch of seagulls on there. Right, um, right. And then also, Jill Pokemon Dameron also says, I think the archer and the main Lego builders is the same bro. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> well, the one who was wearing the hat <laughs> is definitely the archer. And, right. and we, I think we all agree that's Wayne. I thought Wayne was the builder. So Zach is the builder, right? The one who makes all the structures. Okay. Yes. I'm just <laughs> smiling and nodding. Uh-huh. I'm a, right. I'm a professional recapper. I know <laughs> all of these things. Yes. Well, since you're on this particular slide, what's really great about this is you can see that 
the axle is much thicker than the original one because right, they right. they knew that it was going to fall apart the first version so they mm -hmm. went back in retooled it and do they have um, a, a shot of the belt behind it because they also had a belt moving behind the windmill which i, I thought was yeah ingenious so that's what this blue thing is here right Right, the blue in the back. Um, yeah, which is so cool. I haven't seen those slider pieces used like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's, you know, one of the, like, I'm sure there's lots of pieces that aren't in the brick pit that they want, but you right. see like a drawer full of these pieces and you're like, oh, let's decorate with all of these. <laughs> well, it was nice to give that counterpoint of that little blue to pop mm -hmm. so that while it was moving, it was, real, and it's shiny, right? With the yeah, translucent yeah. blue. And right, then and then yellow in front was also moved. Uh, in a right, and the Brick Cove says they were smart not to have a solid tower. Yes, absolutely, and seagulls too. <laughs> <in this field>. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so silly. And I think too, we've seen from just the builds that these two make. They are super strong and also very artistic. Too. I think, yeah. though, I agree with you that this build of the suite of builds, this one was not as artistic as some of the others. Yeah. And if you compare it to Natalie Michelle's, that Natalie Michelle have the aesthetics while right. Wayne and Zach have the engineering. Yeah. I mean, this is it falling over. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see without that tower there how flat it is, like compositionally. Yeah storytelling it's fantastic mm -hmm. engineering wise it's great and then right. as far as the like actual composition of how things are laid out it's a little yep. flat and and this one made it to 55 miles per hour yeah yeah really well done definitely <laughs> yeah i think that um every time i see zach and wayne's builds like when they did the whale it was just like are you kidding me you did all of that and just the size of it and then what they did with the demolition derby where they were smart to put all of the they put a fake wheel on the outside so then that way it was you know it was like a tank over the actual substructure right 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 so yeah really really well done yes so i think so far we've seen uh those two yep and then now we're at lauren and brian so this one, I just have to say, I felt so bad for them about the critiques that they were getting throughout it. <laughs> like, cause they started out where it was just all the rock work and the, mm -hmm. the brick masters came in and were like, it's really gray. <laughs> and they were like, well, we're gonna add a bunch of colorful coral. And then they added all of this. And one of the final critiques was, it's really busy and too colorful. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. Like, I totally, I totally get both of those criticisms. But right, it felt so bad for them. Of like, I just imagine being in that position of like, but we added that because you told us. <laughs> like, to. you told us you didn't <laughs> like the gray, so we listened to you. And then Debo also mentions that he's surprised that none of the teams angled the tower to let the wind pass around it. That mm. would have been smart, and it yeah. would have been different too. Like like aerodynamicize. Well, and they talked about that too, as far as the the Lego learning session mm -hmm. and flat surfaces catch the wind. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Did you get a photo, by the way, of Amy with the hair dryer? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Next time I'll try and grab more behind the scenes. Oh no, no, I, this is great. I'm I'm really enjoying this. Me too. Yeah, and then, it, was, um, it was fun going through again. Brick Code yeah. says that might not have been um, an option as far as they might not have been able to. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We have learned that they get a lot of brief mm -hmm. that we, doesn't make it on camera. Right. And Glenn says that they went overboard <laughs> with regard to. Yeah, I think so too. Because it is really busy. You know, it when is. You take it's a very, wide shot like this. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And I think like you know, a way to do this a little more strategically mm -hmm. would be like they a little bit have, you know, like a streak of green, a streak of pink, but if it was a more continuous, like if you think right. of how plant life grows, if it was just like a like organic pink shape here, that was like a big right. color, color block that your well, eye could like rest on. Yes, like Sam and Jessica did a lot of that in season mm -hmm. one where they used a lot of color, but it was more like groupings of color and, right. you know, it flowed together. 
And this is a nice close up of yeah. the two by two bricks, round bricks. Mm -hmm. On some oh, minifigure collectors here. Hey, minifigure collector. <laughs> so yeah, some of the some of the coral detailing. Mm -hmm. um, the yep. jellyfish creature, which was a very clever build, but I think they did say, you know, unfortunately, like those wavy arms didn't wave like we wanted them. But that's the kind of thing yeah. you don't know was, until they turn the fan on. Yeah, and I was hoping this starfish was gonna move too. I didn't really see the starfish move because that would have been an opportunity if they put it on a rotator. They could have had that move as well. Judging by, because you can see it does have fins. It's got those like airplane fins. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of their builds they intended to move. Probably <laughs> they again because they didn't have the testing and no right. one's ever like built this before. You know? <laughs> like. I think a lot they were banking on moving that didn't end up moving. That's true. And then speaking of aerodynamic, that Glenn thinks Caleb and Jacob look pretty <laughs> aerodynamic. And we'll get to that. We will get to that. Yes. We and will. then Joel thinks that uh, they needed a pattern of green leaves at the bottom. Ooh, yeah, it was yeah, more, was and Robin agrees, more like a confetti look. Yeah. And yeah, that was sure. unfortunate. For sure. And Joel, uh, they needed a pattern of green leaves at the base. Green is a neutral enough color to pull the attention away from a character Right, color. right, right. Yep, good point. And of course, it's very easy for us to just sit here in our homes. And, yeah, and, and that's right. That. <laughs> Backseat drivers, right? Or <laughs> Right. And then yeah. these uh, seahorses were probably my favorite thing. Yes, the they look so playful and yes. so colorful. Yes. Very, very sweet. That could be like little cake decorations, right? Totally. On cake toppers, yeah. And again, I would imagine, because you can see they're on like axles mm -hmm. through holes. So I would imagine these were also, they were hoping would rotate and then didn't. Yeah, I just looking, can you uh, zoom in on the axle underneath yeah. the yellow one? Yeah, see, they have it inside an axle brick. So I don't think that was gonna move. I think that it's in a like Technic pin hole. Yeah, they, they should have used a pin to pin type of connector right, instead right, right, of right. the axle. So that's where, if they wanted it to spin, that's where they should have done that. Totally, but <laughs> the what I didn't notice until I grabbed this freeze frame is these mm -hmm. are mini figure legs to yeah. make the roll of the tail. I think that's- Yes, that, that was order. brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Super fun. And then Debo says, Mark and Steven had the most aerodynamic. They curved the surface. Yes, we will get there. Right, 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 Don't right. worry, we will get there. <laughs> no, spot the magic ninjas here. Welcome. Oh Welcome to the stream. Yeah, um, I think that um, I just love these visuals, too, that you pulled up, Yana. This is great. And so this is, you can see one of the fins is flying. This is a fin yeah. in the air right now. <laughs> The, you can see like the dance party mm -hmm. lettering and all that. Like I yeah. think the tower works really nicely. Well, you know, the dance party was too small though. I mean, That's remember fair, yeah. when um, Richard and David put the Fibonacci numbers on and they were huge. Right, right, right. right? They could have put dance on one side and party on the other side as big, bold letters. I, I think it got lost Absolutely. in the tower. Yes. But Definitely. I think, like, since the theme is dance party, and this one was called um, "Tidal Turbine Tango," like, <laughs> I think they really were banking on, you know, starfish spinning, these guys spinning, yeah, arms waving, and it just didn't happen. No, it didn't. It's unfortunate, and I think it goes back to when we talked about Wayne and Zach that they designed that extra um, the belt behind the windmill to. Right power some of the other parts of the build yes. that was really smart and like you were talking about the little cups to grab the wind mm -hmm. and move those parts and I, I think that's what was missing from Lauren and Brian's yes agreed and what did this one make it to on miles per hour let's see Lauren and Brian they were 50 50 miles per hour so they were kind of middle of the pack right or actually right. probably lower on the on the scale because the lowest one was what 45 well, no, except funny. for the people that went home, but there was a big gap there. <laughs> yes, there was a big gap. We'll, we'll get there. We will get there. Yeah. Now, it's it's always interesting, too, because like you were talking about, it's easy for us because, you know, what do they call it? An armchair quarterback? Right? Right. If I was there, I would do this. Right. Well, we don't know that. I mean, 
we we all think that uh, you know when you're under pressure and you've got to build within a certain time frame as you know from mock improv you know <laughs> you have to adapt right? right you know it's funny with that mock improv i'm gonna go back to that last one real quick uh -huh. i i said it like right at the beginning of like i told myself i was gonna work like general to specific like big to small details and i was already like with the tiny little bowls and chopsticks <laughs> and i feel like those those are kind of different tactics and i feel right. like this one suffers from they went big like let's do a big gray base a big white tower and then they went in and added all the details after yeah whereas like people were saying with like having a green base are you saying like bigger lettering like if those were things that you had had planned clearly from the beginning mm -hmm. could have been built into it but you have to just like start and then at the end you have to just like add whatever detail you can right and and that that um when it came down towards the end then that's when oh gee we have the details but maybe we don't have the engineering down right and then that that you know sets you back time wise and then um joel pokemon dameron talks about we're armchair builders <laughs> instead of armchair quarterbacks right totally <laughs> i like and to yeah if i was there i would try to make the contestants cry reality tv villain for the win <laughs> We we know that you want to. I mean, it's he's been very transparent. Right. He wants Debo to be his partner for this next one because we know Debo would kill this. And next week's episode too, we'll talk a little bit about the precursor for the next week's episode. But Debo would be all over next week's episode as well. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and and Debo says Joel po uh, Pokey Bull Dameron. Marbella, you're the Wayne to my Zach. It's like, oh, <laughs> well, I think we see a bromance forming already. Shooting, shooting arrows straight into the heart yes, of the other contestants. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> Cupid's arrow there. <laughs> so this one was was one of my favorites. Um, mm -hmm. Mark and Stevens wind power yes. terraforming. Yes. Yes. I did. There was a critique on this, which I tend to agree with, that like mm -hmm. the windmills are so present the the space theming yeah the color the was off gets a little lost well and it's a moon base you don't have like red and green and primary <laughs> colors on a moon base right well i, mean, I don't know it's very like um uh oh my god what is it thunderhawks are go like <laughs> <laughs> like there's definitely there's an, an era of sci-fi that's bright primary color yeah or maybe anime too anime sure, could, could yeah. go that way but when I first saw this with the bright red uh, windmill, I just immediately went to the Netherlands and you know mm. tulip farms and all of that. That's it did fair, not, yeah. you know, say space to me. Right, and right, right. I wasn't sure if they had access to mini figs because why didn't they put Benny out there? Right? Do you remember <laughs> if they put Benny or any of the space? So figures? they did brick built astronauts. Yeah, they should have. They, there's so many astronauts. I mean, there I don't know are. if they weren't allowed to. Or... I, no, some people did use minifigures. One team used yeah. minifigures. But personally, I thought these were great little builds. Mm -hmm. They're yeah, I think really so fun too. little astronauts. So Thunderbirds. Yes. <laughs> and Robin Eklund says, aw. <laughs> I think she was talking about Joel and uh, Debo together. <laughs> so and then, sweet these little uh, little plant things are so yeah i didn't too. even see those until you just zoomed in i mean that it just they, they i think their colors were way off yeah for a moon base i know they were terraforming a moon base so you know you you can't have it all gray you got to have some thing right, forming out of right. it but yeah but i was expecting benny or some star wars minifigs or something something yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's possible they just didn't have any classic space looking stuff. Like, that's totally possible. Possible. But and then uh, maybe Emmett wasn't right. available. <laughs> but this is, I or love the idea of having these on hoses because I'm sure they were like yes. wiggling a lot in the yeah. wind. Yeah. The tubes, I love the tubes. When, they, when I was uh, working on some of those. Um, architecture and landscape series mm. uh, those have lots of tubes like on the san francisco skyline and the tokyo skyline they have a lot of flex tubes which are great nice now i didn't understand what the number 27 was did you did they ever explain that they didn't know and the other the blue one had an eight on it oh 
So I think it's probably just like detail for the sake of detail. Maybe it has special significance to them. Yeah, so <laughs> The Tubes was a great band, according That's to Glenn. Right. And then right. um, also Joel mentions, I bet you the licensed minifigs aren't available. That's but I right. have a feeling those numbers do mean something, but it ended up on the editing floor. Maybe. Because why would you just randomly put the number 27 and the number right. eight on there? And, and that's what I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Are they 27? They're not the twins. Is one of them 27? I don't know. Possibly, but that's a, that's a detail that I wish they would have said more of. Right. Yeah. And, but one of the, I think one of the cleverest details is having these little astronauts on strings just yes. <laughs> going for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> that that was very very cute and funny and then that little detail too above the 27 with that little mm -hmm. rounded two by two it looks like or maybe um yeah so some of some of the little like rivets almost yeah, like rivets yeah. on the side of the the tower and it's all like tiled and shaped there's mm -hmm. a lot going on here so there's like right. a illusion of simplicity which is kind of hard to do with Lego because it's so easy to make it look so mm -hmm. busy. Now, according to Glenn, he says eight and 27 are both cubes, but were they trying to do like a Fibonacci type of thing, <laughs> similar to what uh, Dave and Richard maybe, were doing? Because hmm. that one won. <laughs> They're like, yeah. oh, we'll put math in it. <laughs> spoiler alert, right? <laughs> no, this is a spoiler show. So yes. <laughs> yeah. Now this one, I think you have 40 miles per hour, but didn't they, they go a little higher? They, they, went, did, they went all yeah. the way to 60. Yeah. They did. Yeah. They did. So yeah. that was a very strong build. I think maybe because it was a moon base, maybe they deliberately went more colorful because if they went too, you know, monochrome, then they probably right, would be right, right. for that. I, I don't know. I, I don't honestly, for a moon base, I never got moon base out of this build. That's totally fair, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see what is next. Ooh, so next we have Dave and Richard's No yes. Matter the Weather. No Matter the Weather. I just love the play on words, too. It is. I and wonder, since, like, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, since Tricky Bricks is having the um, the pun, was it puntastic builds that are going to be uh, next week, <laughs> yeah. this this could be, like, the start of that. Right. I, want, I wonder, like, do the teams all come up with their own names or are there some producers there being like, well, that's okay, but what about this name? <laughs> I, I think they do come up with their own names. Probably. I, this I, one's I think great. So. I love yeah. this one. The name yeah, well, this great. was just so different. And they were very smart to think about it this way, too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, so incorporating sound in addition to all the movement. So they had two two layers of, you know, different senses that you could see, you know, all the all the different and, and also it was a personal build too. Right. Because right. Richard talked a lot about his his grandmother and the plants that were in her house. And now he's taking care of those plants. So you could tell it was very special to him as well. Absolutely. And then and Debo says there's a good gnome front and center. Uh-huh. Yes. yes, a brick built gnome, too. That's true. Here's some of the Several gnomes them. closer. Whoops. Yes. And Robin says they're so playful and colorful, and she loved this one. Yeah. Yes. And especially the fact that it was a multi-ethnic group of gnomes. Right. It was like, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's the kind of thing you don't think about mm -hmm. of like. Oh yeah, I've only seen white garden gnomes. Yeah, <laughs> like it's nice to I have love garden gnomes this. of color. <laughs> A gnome of color, exactly. <laughs> and then um, also Joel Pokemon Dameron talks about. I love how they had the pollen studs come out of the flowers in so the smart. back. So smart. When the wind was was um, was it blasting? Yeah. Here's and the, the wind chimes. The awesome. Pollen inside of one of the tulips. Yes. Yes, and I think too when they were first doing their test, because the other thing that was really good about this episode is they showed the process of testing. Yeah, and, yeah. And I think they probably had a similar kind of test with the hanging one too, but we never saw it. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I think this this was just so special to see, and so you could tell that. Details. 
They loved it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, going back to this one, I want to point mm -hmm. out two things. First, just notice the gnomes' hats. They're mm -hmm. wearing hats. We'll come back to that. Okay. But these purple flowers with, with that like castle tower piece. Yes. And these um, like missiles. Um, Gorgeous. Oh, are they missiles? I thought they were um, the transparent rods, like the lightsaber rods. They've got the little like they're like the projectile. Oh. Piece, Oh, okay. I personally, I've I only have them in green and red. I've mm -hmm. never seen them in purple. Um, yeah, so I didn't realize that. Yeah, I, I was thinking of Samuel L. Jackson in the Star Wars movies because he always had purple <laughs> right, lightsaber. Right, Mace Windu. Oh, okay. I'm glad you pointed that out. Yeah. Um, also, I will say the gnomes mouths are kind of terrifying. I think mm -hmm. they're very clever characters. <laughs> the mouths freak me out a little bit though. You would think they could have gotten some other, the new dots tiles <laughs> with those little dog faces, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And then um, apparently Joel must have missed the testing uh, part. Does yeah, that mean you're watching Lego Masters now, Joel? Cause Joel was kind of like refusing to watch it cause he must have been spoiled in promo. <laughs> well, Apparently he missed it, yeah. And then uh, Debo was sure that the flowers would have been ripped from the ground. And, right. and that's why the testing was important yes. about why they did that. <laughs> and then gnomes are terrifying, period. No qualifications <laughs> required. You're not wrong. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Um, the Brick Coast oh. says, they're supposed to be singing. That, yeah. Well, I, I buy that. Still or, creepy, but. Or they're yelling sure. in fear, like, there's a fan coming. <laughs> Run for your lives. That's them screaming <laughs> into the void, yes. Yeah. <laughs> hide, hide. Protect the flowers while you can. <laughs> also, you can kind of see in this, they've got these little mushrooms. Yes. Um, and then very, very like sweet. Pollen. These mm -hmm. flowers were so cool. This went by so, so much. Yes. So much variety too. I think that, you know, you, you had just that feeling of just all. And this is what Lauren and Brian needed in theirs is more taller types of structures, right. you know, for the color palette. Yeah. No one quite delivered like this in terms of composition, different levels, different yes. colors, color blocking. And I love to, there was a moment um, towards the end where they were like, what are you thinking? It looks too busy to me. It looks too busy to me too. Should we take some stuff off of it? Yes. Which is such a like, editing is so important. And it's something that if you don't like hone that ability, it's really hard to see. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy with Lego to just keep adding and keep adding. So like, right. I don't know if they took off anything, but just that their minds were both there and they were talking mm -hmm. about it and we got to see that. I really liked that little. That was thing. really good to see. It was, that's almost like a behind the scenes kind of mm -hmm. thing. And Glenn says, they're either singing or astonished. <laughs> and then Joel says, oh, that's why the mouths are open. And right. then what song would a gnome sing? <laughs> they're coming to get you. No, it's the underpants gnomes, remember? <laughs> they they um, had a song. <laughs> I think David Bowie actually has a gnome song. I think maybe before he was David Bowie, because he was oh. like a professional songwriter for like commercial oh. jingles. I'm pretty sure oh, wow. he has some like terrifying 60s gnome song. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <I>, wow. <laughs> that was that was a tangent I wasn't expecting. <laughs> I'm also thinking of uh, Leonard Nimoy's Bilbo Baggins song, oh. <laughs> which is another deep cut of terrifying weirdness. So Joel says uh, to Debo, we're coming to get you with a background chant of nom, nom, nom. <laughs> <laughs> but um, bum. Okay. So this is and, it in motion. Okay. Pink Floyd has a gnome song too. Oh, wow. Okay. There well, we maybe we'll have to have a special of gnome songs. <laughs> totally. Yeah. That gnome funny. playlist going. Oh, we should tell Tricky Bricks to have a gnome challenge. Yeah. Oh. That would be fun. That is a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So, so before we go on, we, um, did we say what speed that, uh, Dave and Richard got to 50 miles per hour. Right. Yeah. And so, the, this, I love these action shots because you can see all the flowers <laughs> like bending in the wind. Yeah, it's amazing they didn't just blow right off. Yeah. Place. 
Um, but I wanted to point out the hats are now gone. So <laughs> oh. that's a detail that they didn't like zoom in. So I didn't notice until I was taking these, oh. but like their hats blew off. Like that was okay. an intentional thing, which I think is so cute. That's hilarious. And then um, Debo says, David Bowie, um, gnomes from Mars? No, <laughs> <laughs> we're going with spiders. <laughs> okay. Wow, also, and I love the colors here. The I mean, colors are great. So nice, and even the tower, they made it green, so it mm -hmm. blended in at the bottom. Right. Yeah. And it's smart, the tower has those holes so the wind can go through it, so it's not mm -hmm. as much resistance. That's a very smart approach as yeah. well. And I'm noticing even these mushrooms are mm -hmm. moving. Like these are also probably on a flex tube. Oh, interesting. So like even the mushrooms, which could wow. just be stationary things they made to like sway in the wind. And the Brick Coast says, I didn't notice their hats. That's wonderful. Isn't that yes. such a cute detail? That is a great detail. And that's um, maybe why their mouths are open. It's like my hat, right. my hat is gone. <laughs> Totally. It's like, isn't there a Winnie the Pooh, like bl the blustery day? Kind yeah. Of, kind of. Yeah. That. Well, and, and then for those in the Brick and Issa Broadcast Network, we watched um, the Clint Eastwood movie, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and the hats keep flying off, you know, from the gunshots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice. really funny. Nice. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely something. And and th this shot doesn't really show it. There it is. We have the, the wind chimes right. in the back. And yeah. the propeller flying off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the pollen spilling out. Too. Mm -hmm. They really did an outstanding job on that. Yeah. And I didn't notice this before, but they even put a stairwell on the back to go up to the tower. Oh, yeah. Which wow. is also supporting it right yeah that's so clever wow that is nice really love it yeah and so spoiler alert this one won right <laughs> <laughs> dun 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 Which i didn't realize either until we're like saying everyone's numbers two groups mm -hmm. got up to 60 and they only got up to 50 miles per hour right but they, but they still won it's the aesthetics that that one absolutely. and the fact they did something completely different from the other completely teams. Completely different, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I was surprised too that I think the people who got up to sixty, they were both expecting to be in the top two. And the other <laughs> thing we should we should mention too is that um, we haven't gotten to them yet, but Mark and Stephen, right? Um, oh no, we did get to them. Mark and Stephen, they had the golden brick, and that they chose not to use it in right, this episode right. and they made it to 60. So they, they were, you know, plenty comfortable. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> we're going off on a David Bowie tangent now. <laughs> Spiders from Mars is so John Carter. Oh my goodness. I am here for all of that. Um, I do <laughs> want to go back to like the, the first shot of theirs. Um, just, what I was talking about with color blocking, which mm -hmm. I, w I studied some art. It doesn't mean I'm like thinking about these things when I'm building Lego, but right. like these people clearly are. Mm -hmm. And and this is such a perfect example of how you have that flora, which uh, the underwater one failed to do, where it's right. like, you know, here's these red tulips, these big blocks of red, here's these big yellow kind of leading at a diagonal that leads your eyes over to this purple, mm -hmm. into this pink, like everything's so big and blocky and like separated. Right. And it's really easy for your eye to kind of like go from thing to thing and tell what everything is, which is just a skill that these builders have that most people in the mm -hmm. competition just aren't at that level in that regard. I agree with that. Plus the fact that they use complementary colors too, like the yellow and the purple together, mm, yeah. the green and the red. And right. yeah, right. that you can tell that they've studied art. <laughs> totally. And I think the yellow too, just more as an accent color too, for a lot of this, uh -huh. it really draws the eye. And then uh, the Brick Cove mentions that they are the only team that's won more than one challenge. Mm, that's true. Right. And then I wonder if you are allowed to bring a color wheel to the competition. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not sure if you are, but it, I think 
a lot of people who do art, they they know about the complementary colors in the color wheel. Right. Yeah. I, I'm sure that Natalie and Michelle would know that because sure. that paint. Which they're also very good at. Them. Yeah. A lot of those same things. So. Build a color wheel. Right. <laughs> okay, Glenn. <laughs> that could be another challenge. I do love the fact that this is flying in the air and it looks like a bird. Yeah, and it it's does. so pretty that it looks like a bird's flying away from the garden. Totally. All right, so we've got two more left. Mm -hmm. um, next is Caleb and Jacob's portal to Atlanta. Yes, but before we talk about the build. Oh, sure. Uh huh. <laughs> the banter and the comedy, because you know, as you know, Will uh, goes around to all the teams and talks to them, and they had to talk about the demolition derby. Right. with the two of them before and the, the camera angles and this kind of was we were talking about this earlier is that they had cameras mounted on all of the cars so they had reruns of different angles of the car going off of the cliff <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh it was so funny <laughs> that was a good touch <laughs> yes okay so portal to atlantis yeah yeah, and this one I feel like suffers a little bit from the same thing that the space one does, where it's like the tower is so big and prominent, mm -hmm. and then the background, even though you've got like some dimension to it, it's like looking at it small like this, it doesn't immediately read as it doesn't movie. stay underwater too as much. Right. But the the best part about this though is unlike uh, Lauren and um, Brian is that they had the right sense of color. It mm -hmm. didn't look scattered. You know, you had the yeah, kind yeah. of the yellow on the base, you had the coral layer, you had the grays and that azure color, which is a great color combination. It is. It I is. really love that. And they nailed the trident. Oh my God, yeah. that is a beautiful trident. It really is. And it looks like that's like offset by mm -hmm. like, like half a stud right here. Yeah, it's hard to make out. It gets a little blurry, but the this mm -hmm. is definitely one where, like, what I was just saying, very judgmentally, <laughs> is like <laughs> looking at it small and far away. Mm -hmm. But as we get into some of the other images, this is definitely one where, like, if you were at a con or something and you're getting to be up close looking at it, yes, like the more detail you will see for sure. And, and I also liked on the left there the column that kind of is toppled over. That's similar to what you would yeah, see under yeah, sea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. noticing too, it's it, even on my screen, which is a lot bigger than this, it's like very pixelated, but I, it looks like these, there's these little yellow, light yellow mm -hmm. Technic balls is what they look like to me. Yeah, I wasn't sure what to make of those. I was thinking maybe turtles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to tell because they used all yellow. Right. I mean, that again, to me, kind of seems like, oh, there's a whole drawer full of these. Let's grab that. And oh, I think they're brick built, or cool are they sphere. not brick built? So there's brick built lull spheres. Oh. And then there's these little, like, it almost looks like popcorn. I'll zoom in mm -hmm. closer and we'll get yeah. more pixelated. But on my, oh, okay. They look like igloos. Like monitor, <laughs> there's like these little things. Yeah. They look to me like they're Technic balls. Oh, you know what? Those might be the antenna balls. You know, the bases for the antennas with the they're little big, notch. They're bigger than that. I don't mm. know. It's just, it's a weird piece, but it creates yeah. a cool texture. It's kind of bubbly looking. And uh, the coat says it might be a hair piece. And then um, Debo says it looks more under, uh, more under pressure than underwater, <laughs> keeping the Bowie thing. <laughs> so, so here for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Debo says they're two by two. Oh, they are domes. two by two domes. Here's a better but shot. I thought they were smooth. I didn't see them they rocking are. like that. There's one stud on top, I can see. And then oh. they've also got some little like radar discs. Right. And so, and so it seems like the consensus is that they're two by two domes. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. But it's just a weird texture, which I appreciate yeah. I'm saying it as a good thing. But it's just, yeah, mm -hmm. just a weird texture. And it seems like they found the piece. <laughs> and then they did the like corresponding brick built one that's larger scale, which is yeah, right. just, just clever. Yeah. And the, the red is nice too with the coral, though I was disappointed they didn't actually use coral for coral. Because <laughs> you know, being in tricky lug, we're, we're always talking about coral. 
So that was that was the one little nit was be like you you can get coral bricks. Why didn't you make right. those out of coral bricks? You made them red, you know. <laughs> yeah, I I did like to the fish swimming like that. Um, yeah, the fish clown fish in the upper left there. The brick built fish are really nice. Yeah, really nice. And nice rock work, nice mm -hmm. architectural details. Let's see what the next one I've got. Oh, here, this isn't a great shot, but there was, I couldn't find a great shot of some of the architectural mm -hmm. rebuilds. So this was the best yes. one I could find. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. And they have fish inside. Right. These those. are little fish mm -hmm. in here. Which is kind of funny because those are some of the fish we used in our mock improv. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And, and also the turbine and the, the windmill itself, the use of the purple and the blue. I really like that. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice. And then uh, Pokemon Dameron. I'm surprised there were two underwater builds with so few teams. Well, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. And that's why they were saying, you know, we're the Atlantic Ocean and uh, Lauren right. and I'm in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> it's a big, big world out there. Oh, here's a little more architectural detail than just simple plant life. It was so well done. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think they've really upped their game because remember that hat that they built? You know, it it was so blocky and it didn't have a lot of details. And yeah, this, I, I don't remember so that hat, better. actually. <laughs> it was so clunky oh, and right. it, they, they leaned back and forth for the movement, but it, it looked like... A, it was, it was, I think I remember talking to one of the Tricky Luggers that they said, um, you know, one of the six year old builders in Tricky Lug would have done a better job. <laughs> yeah. I will not name names. <laughs> well, we'll just say that he's a regular. <laughs> right. Oh, this is interesting. I'm noticing to get this like wrapping seaweed, they've got mm -hmm. these flower stem pieces just like shoved into chains. Oh, that's clever. Interesting, yeah. And I like the the one by one plates mm -hmm. just like stuck in the holes there. Yeah, and of course the use of the palisades again. We saw a lot of the teams use the palisade bricks, and mm -hmm. this one they're they're using the palisades with the lily pads, give it some interest. Yeah. But I still like these clownfish. These clownfish are great. Yeah, they look like yeah. happy clownfish. Totally. <laughs> And then Debo says also great close up of those blades using slopes rather than angling the blades is dope. <laughs> and that's the other mm -hmm. thing. <laughs> so Yano, if you're on the Brick and Easter Broadcast Network, we often say it's dope, yo. <laughs> so I'll put that in the chat. <laughs> yeah, that is smart using using the slopes to get the wind angle. I hadn't I hadn't taken that in yet. Thank you. For and then it's uh, the Brick Cove says their hat wasn't supposed to be a or was wasn't supposed to be a chef's hat. It was supposed to be something different. And they were told to change directions because it wasn't fashion. <laughs> okay. Oh my Somehow, God. Caleb and Jacob and fashion don't seem to be in the same sentence. Don't, don't get me started on the fashion in that episode. <laughs> That's, I already recapped that. <laughs> Which one is the Palisades brick? Don't make me Google. Oh, it's the rounded one. It's the cylinder, the one by one cylinder shape. That's a palisade brick. This piece? I think of palisades the as the like one by two with the curve. Yeah, it, it's also a one by two, which often looks like a, a little raft that you would have um, <laughs> on, a, on a pirate ship. Uh-huh. <laughs> Fashion, turn to the left. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we were talking about this before we went on the stream, if we were needed to strike a pose, right? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm going to have to get lessons from Yano, though. I, I, like, I'm wearing a T-shirt. <laughs> no, maybe one of these days I will have to really dress up for one of these streams. Maybe, for the, maybe for the season finale. Of oh, the finale. Yes. Yes, let's plan on that. <laughs> I will have to text you though, or, or get some fashion <laughs> right. <from you>. beforehand. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now this is... one, I think, made it to sixty miles per hour too on you this one. Correct. It was Jacob. Yeah. yeah. 
So this one survived as well as Mark and Stevens survived. And right. the other thing too, when they showed it at 60 miles per hour, that thing was rotating and it looked so elegant and beautiful. It did. And this one, this, there, like this is one of the towers falling. It's so blurry, you can't really tell. But this, I was trying to like get a, a clip, a, a shot of each one breaking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, this one didn't break though. But that was just the towers, yeah. just these towers fell over was the only thing. <laughs> oh, so Joe wanted to correct me that the palisades are one by two or longer. One by ones are just round bricks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my bad, my bad. I was gonna see if I could bring one out, but. yeah. That's okay. They do and then, go great um, together, though. The, yeah, the cylinders with the palisade. And the brick cove says we should do a cosplay stream. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. A, well, have feeling, we have several weeks. <laughs> I have a feeling Aubrey would be good at that, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she would. And, you know, maybe we can just make it a big party. So <laughs> I actually do. I mean, I'm kind of like cosplaying as my sig fig for these episodes or like it's i don't know mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a symbiotic relationship right and apparently this was edited to show mark and steven so surprised they weren't on the top yeah right, well right, right. especially because you know mark and steven had the 60 mile per hour one and yeah we've been kind of playing them up throughout the season as like yeah, we beat Tyler and Amy and other competitions. So yeah, we know what we're doing. So right, I think right. I think they did that deliberately too, Joel. You're right. I'm really grateful because that's. I mean, I think this is <laughs> one of everyone's biggest gripes about this season. Is it's so much about destruction and about structure mm -hmm. that like it often feels like people are out on technicalities. So right. this would be an easy one where it was just the people that made it to sixty one. So I'm actually yeah. really grateful that it was actually, oh, but this one is aesthetically beautiful and did exactly. un unexpected things with the wind. So I'm grateful for that. So the Brick Cove was asking, what was their extra movement? I missed that. As far as for Caleb and Jacob, I think it was the actual, um, the bottom of the the coral, I thought was also uh, shaking back and forth. Yeah. Because I felt, think that's it, why they put them on mixel joints, right? Right, their coral fell over. That was the movement. <laughs> <laughs> and then Debo says, "Ground control to major prawn." <laughs> I'm so glad that you're spotlighting all the Bowie references. Yes. <laughs> and next week, cosplay as your favorite puppet. Oh, Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I think they were actually surprised as far as that they were moving. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know if it, it could have been an edit too about that but i think that they did plan because if you can you um zoom in a little bit on the coral piece yeah. the red coral piece that's not coral <laughs> yeah because i think if you look at the base i think they put it on a mixel joint which would make it strong and flexible and still kind of push up against you know with with the wind blowing and doc samson is here hey doc how's hey, doc it going <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Yeah, we're doing the recap of the Lego Master Season 2 Bricking Wind episode. Yeah, so this one made it to 60 miles per hour. And I think going back to your earlier point that they had that color blocking too with the, the yellow, the red, and the right, gray, right. gray tower in the middle. So Doc says, I must RP every day. Okay, I'm not sure what RP is. <laughs> what, what am I missing here? <laughs> Repeat? Hey, Doc. And I think Mark and Steven were actually surprised is what I meant. Yeah, I think, I think some of us were surprised too because I think we were expecting whoever could withstand the 60 mile per hour fan. Right, in the right, top right. Two. But also they had the golden brick. So they knew they were safe as well. But I think everybody wants to be in the top two. But you got to admit that, you know, what Dave and Richard did with the sound garden, it really put it over the top. It oh, okay. Really Role good. play. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's like yeah. it shows you what a noob I am when it comes to some of the acronyms. There's okay. Because Debo and um, Doc Sampson, oops. 
Doc Sampson says he role plays as a puppet all the time. That's true. And you're very good at it as well. And then um, we're going to rent pachyderms for RP. <laughs> sure. That's for my Jurassic Park or Jurassic World build that I'm doing. Yeah. All right, so we've got one more left, which is Maria and Philip's new Tinkerton City. Right, right. And before we go there, um, the Brick Cove says they didn't play the Golden Brick, though, so they weren't safe. Well, that's true, but by the time their windmill went through it and they knew they were at 60, they knew they were safe. So they didn't play it beforehand, but once they went through the fan, they, they knew they were going to be safe. Right. Debo! <laughs> Debo has a lot of fans. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. this one's super cute. It did yeah. get a critique that the build skill just like wasn't at the level of the other teams, which I definitely understand. Yeah, I'd but, have to agree with that. But I think, I mean, it, it did kind of remind me of something if I had this many Lego bricks as a kid that I would have built as a kid. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it also kind of reminded me of an earlier episode with Don and Jack, where they had built that, uh, the cat burglar. Uh -huh. And, you know, the week before they had built this beautiful butterfly, and then they went with the cat burglar, which was really just a bunch of modular, you know, squarish kind of buildings. And that's yeah, kind of how yeah. I felt about this with Tinkerton. They were all like little modular squarish buildings mm -hmm. without a lot of interest like the other teams use flex tubes and other shapes and this was very square at the bottom yeah. definitely yeah. and then Hugo did says I, I love this build except um for the fan blades great color distribution despite what the judges said well that's true with the color of the green it kind of also reminded me of like a uh, hobbiton you know in mm -hmm. the lord of the rings that this might be like a little uh, Hobbiton area. Right. Tinkerton. Tinkerton. So, yeah. And then uh, let's see. Joel says, uh, this reminded me of set number 31097, the townhouse pet uh -huh. shopping cafe. Y you love it how he puts in the numbers, too? Well, so, I'm <laughs> sure it's just memorized off the top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> because he never builds them. They're all on the box. Right? <laughs> Thank you, Joel. <laughs> I do like how the fan blades look like it's just a dots bracelet that's been straightened out. <laughs> I hadn't really noticed that until now. <laughs> Can you zoom in a little bit yeah. too? Because the other thing about this, which is kind of sad, is that just if you look at the very center, it's like a two by two round brick, right? Or a round um, plate. Mm -hmm. It's really small. Yeah. And you're just looking at this going, I don't know what they're thinking because that that fan is just going to blow this over. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can't all be good at everything. <laughs> <laughs> so this was unfortunately didn't make it. But there are a lot of great details. And this was actually one. There's so many <laughs> little minifigure stories happening in this one. Right. So this is one where I actually had like too many screen captures where I was like, we're going to be talking about this all day. Oh, um, yeah, because so of, I just picked a few of my favorites. Yeah. But like this is also one where like if we were at a con, you were seeing it in person, you would see, mm -hmm. you know, that we've got this little like couple with their surfboards and flotation devices on their right. way to the beach. We've got like someone hanging out eating a orange or something on the roof. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot and, of little stories. And the flags were brilliant too. Mm -hmm. Having the flags on that little rope and having them, you know, move in the wind as far as they got. <laughs> and um, also, when you were talking about the dots bracelets, uh, Joel also said that maybe they thought this was the dots. <laughs> <Maybe so. laughs> um, and this was a cute detail. I thought there's like a technician up up one of the devices. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And and I think, though, kind of to the judge's point, though, this, I mean, it it's Lego. It's clearly Lego, but it hasn't, like, elevated it yeah, to another yeah, yeah. level, right? Agreed. Agreed. And, and 
Go ahead. I'm sorry, I was just reading. Uh, the Brick Cove says, I actually think their blades might have lasted well enough that they, if they weren't had not been as close to the building. Yes. And you're probably right, because once it hit the building with the bending of the, the blades, then yeah, it was over. And so they had this nice detail that the judges liked of having the little window. Mm -hmm. And I was really noticing, they have like two other big like geared devices. And the concept was that it's like a town of inventors. Yes. Um, these gears don't do anything. Like if you actually look, like, these oh, gears really? aren't actually touching anything. <laughs> so it's, it's oh. just for show. <laughs> oh no. That's, see, that goes back to, the, it's not an elevated build, right? Right, right. Because you could easily connect those. I right. mean, come on. Yeah, that was phoning it in. <laughs> was, and, or they ran out of time. Just, right. You know, or they just don't know how to, they're, I mean, I don't know how to do the Technic gearing. Um, and so here- I could get by. I, I, could, I, I know Devo could definitely do it and right. Aubrey and some others here in the chat. But yeah, but that, I mean, it's, like you said, it's not connected to anything. Right. I didn't notice that before. Right. And then we've got another, like, I don't think this gear is connected. Maybe it is. Maybe that one's connected that we just can't see. But then this was just like a little extra device where it's mm -hmm. like, these gears are actually touching but they're not powering anything as far as I can tell. <laughs> they're just turning to turn. Right. And Which, then um, apparently it's a Fugazi. <laughs> okay. And I think I like, I would love to have seen this leaned like further in this like Technicolor steampunk mm -hmm. direction. It's like a mm -hmm. little bit like, like Fabuland steampunk or something. Yeah. Yeah. Where, it would have been really fun if like all of the houses were decorated with gears or like it would have been perfect and you're right um steampunk they should have leaned more into steampunk right. they had the gears they had the hoses they had some of gold yes, colors in yes, there exactly yeah so, and i'm kind of surprised no one did that i guess it would be wind punk because it's wind power not steam power <laughs> hey <laughs> let's start a new trend <laughs> let's do wind punk <laughs> And then Joel says, uh, what do you call those machines? Contraptions that look complicated, but don't work. <laughs> Experiments, I guess. Right. Over-engineered. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> wow. So there, was, there was a real, like, heart to this to me. Like, mm -hmm. it just, it didn't go as far as yeah. it could have. Yeah. So I guess, I guess now we can say, now I think that was the last build, right? It was. Yeah. Okay. And sadly, this was the one that didn't make the cut. 20 yeah. miles per hour. Yeah. Yep. And Wait. we have some more chat here, too. Rube Goldberg machine? Maybe no, that's Rube, Rube Goldbergs about. do something. It's just a very complicated path to get to the something image result for what you do you call a contraption that looks complicated but doesn't work rube goldberg machine okay no, well, rube goldberg machines do something yeah. it's just you know those are the ones where it's like like a chicken lays an egg and the egg counterbalances something and then it like sets something mm -hmm. else on a course and it's just to like like wake you up it's, it's like, almost like a, a domino effect right right exactly yeah so we'll have to look that up Okay, but so that, you can that Google also that. also would be a brilliant direction to take this in if it was something that was like overcomplicated but did something. That would have been fun if they had a wind powered uh, machine that dropped an egg somewhere and that powered something right. else and made something dunk into a, a you know, a tank or something. <laughs> the reason I know this is because my seventh grade science class, we had to make Rube Goldberg machines. Oh, okay. And like you, it taught you how to use simple machines like a, a wedge and an inclined plane and a lever, and et cetera. <laughs> so Glenn says you can also um, look for amazing Rube Goldberg uh, videos as well. Okay, go that band. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rube Goldberg makes simple tasks complicated. Yes. Yeah, and then um, Debo thinks of GBCs as Rube Goldberg. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, I think yeah. of that too. My cool. my machine was uh, it was a pair of scissors was the final action to cut a red ribbon. Oh, um, on a Rube Goldberg museum. Oh wow! Oh, well, how perfect! <laughs> Wow, but so that's, that's why I'm that so passionate condition? about it. <laughs> no, 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 it was my seventh grade science class. <laughs> mm. A 
assignment wow. to learn about simple machines. That's very cool. Because I awesome. went to a hippie school. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great hippie school. It was. It was. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So I think that concludes that the yeah. slideshow. But uh, what do you think about the episode itself? Oops. Oh no! Did she? Uh, did she just leave the studio? <laughs> okay, I think she hit the wrong button. But let's just say she'll be back. I'm sure she'll be back. But uh, one of the things that I thought was very very sweet is that okay, we all know Maria and Philip went home, and there she is. She's back. I was just trying to stop sharing. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. We knew you'd be back. Uh, no, we, I was just mentioning that, um, you know, it's always hard when the teams go home because they bonded over the weeks. And so you see them all hugging each other. And, you know, and then they talk to the camera about what a great experience this was for them. And I tell you, when Philip started crying and saying, you know, I'm so thankful that my wife took this journey with me. It was just very heartwarming. It was a very sweet couple. And it was. I know that Richard and Flynn really identified with them. So mm. I'm sure it must have been hard for uh, Flynn and Richard also to see them go home. Right, right. Yeah, right. yeah. And and we already talked about who won. So Dave and Richard, you know, they've got two wins now. But mm -hmm. don't forget that Stephen and Mark have the golden brick. And if they can hold on to it for as long as they can, right. you know, they, they may be okay. So <laughs> nicely played, Yano. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very meta. Okay. Well. So that, I, that I went home when you were talking about people going home. Like, <laughs> people going home. <laughs> <laughs> but she did it on her own. I didn't kick her out, just for the record. Just for the record. She accidentally did that on her own. <laughs> Okay, so we have what Natalie and Michelle as Brian and Lauren next week. Um, oh, you mean we're now taking predictions on who's going to go home? Oh my goodness! <laughs> I think Caleb and Jacob are probably going to be on the short list pretty soon. I don't know. I, I, they did well this week, but some of their builds are they're very blocky. I don't know if it's just me just looking at what they've done. It's very blocky builds. Even yeah. the demolition derby one. If it wasn't for that that uh, wrecking ball that they had on it. It was a very square vehicle in my humble opinion. So, all right. Well, I was going to say this was a lot of fun. I had so much fun doing this. Thank you for yeah. giving me an opportunity to, to work with you because yeah. I know that many of us are fans of yours. And for those of you who don't know about Yano, why don't you go ahead and uh, talk a little bit more about yourself? Um, yeah, hi, I'm Yano River Blue. It's my full given name. Um, I'm Yano River Blue on many things, but Femme from the Block is where you can find me on Instagram to see my Lego specific content. Um, if you want to see more of the art that I do, you can also support me at patreon.com slash Yano starting at $1 a month. And that's how you get a glimpse of like new stop motions that I'm working on, uh, exclusive downloads of music, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and this is a lot of fun. I, I, I definitely, in the previous recap show, I was like watching the episode and then like one minute after it ended, like <laughs> turning my lights on and streaming. So I wasn't yeah. really able to process as much. Yeah, that's so true. I really enjoyed having, having a day to, and then also you know getting the screen captures to like take in more of the details. So I felt much better prepared right. other than um oliver needing to be fed and go out and <laughs> other than that i felt much better prepared today oh good good and i, I appreciate you being flexible with my schedule because i work tuesday nights in general and so when i would what i would do is shane levan would stream them on the discord server for me so i nice. could watch it at five o'clock uh -huh. And then when I got off of work or later, I could watch your recap shows and try to try to make some commentary. So for me, it really works out well because I can watch them on my Hulu account at midnight. And then right, we, right, had, right. we had a discussion just so behind the scenes, folks, that Yano and I talked about it at noon, trying to understand the flow of today's show. And you're on the Brickanista Broadcast Network <laughs> if you don't know where you are. And please like and subscribe the channel if you haven't already. Also, a couple of announcements, too, is that August 14th, this weekend, this Saturday, is a full day. So adult fan of Lego Day. So if you're a member of a LUG, this is an opportunity for you to get some discounts from the Lego store. And Yano just got 
your AFOL card, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I'm officially a member of, of Baylug, even though I haven't participated in anything yet. <laughs> I got the I got the email. You paid the, the, the fee to get a membership, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, you contribute so much to the community, though, Yano. I mean, I we really appreciate that. that. I mean, you inspire so many of us, and we're really looking forward to you know, any, anything that you put out, whether it's music or it's stop motion or builds. I mean, you're just so talented. And I also told Yano that BrickCon is coming October 1st through 3rd. So if you want to register, you should register soon. And that um, they're also requiring vaccines. So you have to show proof of vaccination and they are requiring masks within the auditorium. So just for those of you worried about safety, and I know that, that we talked about that earlier too, but uh, just wanted to say thank you. I'm going to look at the comments. Uh, you haven't seen Shane in a while. Yes. Well, Shane is still on the Discord server and he's streaming on Twitch. So if you want to follow Shane LeVan, he's going by a new name too. In fact, I'll put oh. it in the chat. Shin Lego. So take a look at Shin Lego, um, oh. both on the Discord server and on Twitch. That that's what he's doing. And also uh, the Brick Cove also likes the day after as well. So it works out well for, for a lot of people. So awesome. great. Awesome. And we were talking that we're gonna continue this even if there's an off week. What we'll do <laughs> is we'll still meet Wednesdays at five o'clock and just talk Lego. You know, we'll pick another topic to talk about. Totally. But, um, I think that having a gap in the schedule is I think hard for everybody. So we'll keep talking about it, whether or not there's an episode or not until the end of the season. Right. And as, now that you've thrown the gauntlet, Iano, we will do some sort of cosplay <laughs> at the end of the season. I mean, she and I have been planning anyway, Talk Like a Pirate Day, September 19th. So that's gonna be on the Brick and Easter Broadcast Network at one o'clock, my usual times on Sundays. And I got confirmation that Captain Morgan, Captain Dave Morgan with his parrots will also be there too. Nice. So we're gonna have a lot of fun. And then Debo says, puppets are people too. Text <laughs> note, sorry, turns out they're actually not people. And I'm glad you mentioned that because next week's episode is the puppet episode. And Debo, if you haven't seen Debo's puppets, he's already made brick built puppets of, was it Ollie and Ship? Shizzle? <laughs> no, I'm thinking of, of Snoop Dogg there. <laughs> Shizzle. What, what's the other character? Ollie and... All right. I know Debo will put it in the chat, but check out Debo's puppets. He's already done this. Nice. And so they're going to have a puppet show. And what I'm really interested to in seeing is they're supposed to be partnering with other teams. Right. So they're competing and yet partnering too, which is similar to season one when they did the, the two builds that had to be one. Sif Siffle, Siffle and Ollie. Okay. I said shizzle, <laughs> shizzle and Ollie. So that's the Love rapper it. version of it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, Okay. Well, great. Well, thank you again, Yano. It's been so great having you on the show. And if anybody yeah. wants to get in touch with me, you know, I'm the Brickanista on Instagram, on YouTube, and on Twitch. And if you feel like sending me a card or anything, then the Brick and Easter Broadcast Network, P.O. Box 31956, Seattle, Washington, 98103. So looking forward to, once again, another recap episode next week, this same time. Thank you, everyone, for all your support. Thank you, Yano, too. Yeah. I had so much fun today, and I'm looking forward to more episodes with you, too. Absolutely. Oh, one, one thing. I realized yes. I didn't give a close-up on my earrings. Oh, which yeah, are here, let me give you a spotlight. Um, still on sprue Ooh. purple tools. Nice. These came out in like the first wave of friend sets oh. and were so controversial because everyone was like, why do girls tools have to be purple? And I was just like, oh. purple, pretty, <laughs> I want those. Oh, man. <laughs> but it's, you know, in theme, I always wear this shirt and these tool earrings together. Yeah, I love that shirt. <laughs> yeah, and then um, we have uh, Spot the Magic Ninja says it's Crescent Fresh and <laughs> Super Crest. <laughs> and of course, Joel Pokemon Dammer now wants those purple tools. Yeah, I got three or four sets of these years and, and years the ago. And the super crescent at the yeah. best. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, that was nice. And also thank you, Robin Eklund, everybody here in the chat that uh, thank you. It was fun. Imagine two weeks in a row. I know. Isn't that crazy? It's like we actually get to see two episodes in a row and yeah. who knows what they're going to do the rest of the season. But I think they're starting to see that viewership is down. And if Brothers from Another Brick is still here, he just posted a video on YouTube about, you know, Lego Masters season two hasn't had the same traction as season one. Yeah, and yeah. whether or not there'll be a season three, that, that'll that be interesting. Right. But uh, anyway, again, once again, thank you again, Yano. It's yeah, so great so having you yeah. here and looking forward to the weeks to come. Yeah, and yeah. for everybody here on the Brick and Easter Broadcast Network, as they say, may the clutch be with you. Take Thank care, you, everyone. everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.